So I thought we'd talk about fuel systems. Obviously we've got to get some fuel into the car, so we look at how the 308 range store it and some of the pitfalls. So what we've got is two, two aluminium fuel tanks and they're mounted inside the car here. And they sit on, on the chassis, and you've got one, one that side and one that side. Pretty much how all the mid-engine cars do it, F40s and everything do it. Um, it's good weight distribution and it works okay, gives you a bit of capacity. Now one of the problems you've got is an aluminium tank sitting on top of a steel chassis. So I'll just lift this back out again. So what happens is, we just cut a piece out, they sit on these little felt pads. So you've got some felt pads here, there's another one sits up there just to support them. But what happens is this felt, over the years, this felt pad gets damp, retains moisture, and it sets up the electrolysis process with aluminium and steel. So that sits on there. And basically, if I come out and show you, you can see from here, this is a piece we've cut out of the bottom of the tank, and you can almost see the line there directly where the pad's been sitting, because the rest of it's absolutely fine. But where the pad's been sitting, you can see we've got holes in the tank. So this happens to all the 308s, boxers. They all do this. Over a period of time, you'll end up with fuel leaks. So what we do is we take the tanks out and we send them away. Obviously it's fairly specialist welding up fuel tanks. And you can see here, there's been one pad there and one pad there. The rest of it's absolutely fine. So something to look out for on 308 aluminium fuel tanks. Here we've got all the different pieces that have been cut out of these tanks and they're all in various states of corrosion. Some have gone through and some, some are just about to go through. You can see that, it's got a tiny little hole just, just through there, so it's just going, and you suddenly get a, a smell of fuel, a bit of seepage, which clearly isn't a good thing in the back of a car. Something else that's gone on this one, and this is just pure corrosion, because there's no padding on this, is the link pipe. And you can see when we've had this blasted, there's a lot of corrosion just starting to go through, and this has actually got holes in, so we need a new one of those. One of the other things that comes up a lot with the 308, Dino, Boxers, all the owners, it's very hard to judge actually how much fuel's in your tank. What happens is you've got, this is sort of as it's in the car, so you've got a few litres that side, a few litres this side, and it, it's joined by this link pipe, which you can see is about an inch or so diameter. The fuel sender, and this isn't the right one, but it's an example, sits in here, a bit like a toilet float, just goes up and down and judges how much fuel you've got in the, in the tank. What you've got, the, the only has one sender for two tanks, and there's no resistance in here, there's no baffling or anything, it's just a pipe. So when you go around one corner, all the fuel from that tank sloshes into this tank. This thing goes up and suddenly you've got a full tank and it's reading full. You go around another roundabout the other way and it all goes <laughs> out of there, through there, down there, and fills this one up, because these are linked by air pipes over the top. So this one becomes full, this one now reads empty and your light comes on. So people, so the only way to know really what, how much fuel you've got in one of these is, is when you're in a straight line and sort of level and it, it's, you're not doing corners and it sort of finds its own level because this transfers quite quickly. You can see you can transfer a lot of fuel down here fairly quickly. So when you're in a straight line, you sort of take an average of where you are, but when you're on corners and fuel lights are coming on, it is a bit disconcerting, but that's why it does it. So, so we've got fuel in the car. I'll show you how it comes through. So we've got to get fuel into these things. So we've got um, Webers. Webers were a, one of the big brand names. You've got um, SU, Stromberg, Solex, but Webers were pretty much the, the brand name, especially for sports cars. It's a very good product and it was used throughout the sort of carburetor era. And basically the faster you wanted to go, the more carbs you want to put on. So the smaller engines had you know, maybe one Weber. Obviously you've seen the V12s with big lines of six of the things. So the 308s run four. So we've got four 40 is the size of the choke, um, DCNF is the design of the carb. So we've got four carbs um, that the pistons can then draw fuel from. So if I show you how the fuel sort of metered fairly basically before it goes into the engine. So getting, getting fuel from the tanks that we've just seen into the carburetors that are on the top. Now here's another one that we haven't cleaned yet, but we're going through the system. So we need a fuel pump. So there's a pump that mounts on the body that draws the fuel from the tanks. Now there's various ones out there. Facet's the sort of the main brand on these and some of the cars with older pumps on, we tend to convert to facets. They're the sort of new reliable ones. So you need a fuel pump. 
Then you're going to filter it. So there's a couple of types of filters. Some of the older cars have got these little glass bowls on that are quite nice, but it's basically a filter in a, a paper element filter. This one runs at a bigger one, so that basically sits on there. And the fuel comes in from the fuel pump through the filter and back out to the carburetors. And it's basically a, a paper gauze filter that as the fuel comes through from the outside, out through the top, and it gets filtered all the bits and pieces. Because you can appreciate on the older cars, there's a lot of sort of muck and sediment that go around fuel tanks. Okay, so now we get to the complicated bit. So we've got our fuel coming out of the tanks, through the fuel pumps, through the filters, and it's arriving at the carburetor. What the carburetor's job is, is to somehow distribute the right amount of air fuel ratio of fuel to air that the car needs to run on. Now, the mixture, ideally it's about 14.7 to one is about the sort of right mixture. Some of the later eco cars will be probably 15s and 16s and some of the early cars want a bit rich so that we might be 12s and 13s. But we need to, somehow this thing's got to deliver um, a mix of air and fuel into the engine so the spark plug can fire it. Very basically, I've, I've used this as an example, this is a body shop Schutz gun. So if we apply air in here and across the top, if I unscrew this, what this does, it's just a pipe going into a bottle of, uh, in this case, body shop under seal Schutz. So by air going across the top of that pipe, it draws the, the product up through the pipe and spits it out the end. Um, in a very basic form. So carburetor does exactly the same. We've got to draw fuel from somewhere and inject it into the engine. So what happens is, if I take this off, we have a, a float chamber in here. So this area here is called the float chamber because it's got a float in it. The fuel goes into there and as you put your foot on the throttle, these butterflies open. So that goes through to the engine. So air is now going basically the same as our Schutz gun. By us opening the throttle, air is now traveling down through these Venturis, which is drawing, the, the, the vacuum effect draws the fuel from the float, float chamber and atomizes it and it disappears into the engine. So basically the same as that very basic Schutz gun, but it, it's a bit more sort of scientific. And then the way it meters the fuel, first of all, it regulates how much is in the float chamber. So this is a, an open and close. It's very much like your toilet system. Fuel comes in here, the float drops. When the float comes up, it shuts the valve. As you use some fuel, the float opens again. So the valve just opens and closes, opens and closes. And it keeps, this is set to a specific height. So this is always held at the right fuel level. So that's how the fuel's metered in. Then what you have, if, if you've got these brass jets, so these are basically, if you can see, brass jets full of calibrated holes. So you've got main jets and you've got idle jets. So I know you can see these. I mean, this is probably a 50 or 55, which is like, no, half a millimeter. So these are tiny, tiny little holes. I don't know if you can see the hole in the end of this is a half a mil hole. So now you, you realise that you've got to filter the fuel correctly because these things block up really easy. Any sediment or muck going around the engine, these little tiny brass holes get blocked up. These get blocked up and then the running of the engine just goes out the window. So that's sort of how it works. So airflow going down. And what you can see in here, um, if I've got a diagram, what happens is, you know, You've got the main jets going in the top. Well, what they do, th there's a reduction here. Um, it's called the choke. So as the air goes down, as it goes through a smaller gap, it speeds up. So therefore it draws the, the fuel through and you can see the little diagram. So by putting a thinner choke in the middle, it, it forces the air to accelerate to get down through, which causes the suction, which draws the fuel out through the brass jets and down and into the engine. So in very basic terms, that's how it does it. Now, if you want to change your um, fuel air flow, flow ratio, obviously you can change the size of the holes in these brass jets. You can, you can get different sizes. So that's how you tune the engine by playing around with the jet sizes and the choke sizes by speeding up and slowing down the air and allowing more fuel in.
specific time. So whether you're going on idle jets, whether you're measuring the idle mixture or the running mixture. It's, it's amazing that it's some, so simple, but it actually works really well. And, and carburetor cars went right through. I mean, when did injection come out? Sort of mid 80s, 328 crutch valves, things like that. This was right through to the 80s. So almost from the beginning of, of petrol, you know, internal combustion cars, every, they all ran on some sort of carburetor system, motorbikes and all sorts. Um, a very basic way of metering fuel and air to get into the engine. Right, so now we've established how they work. Now we've got four of these to set up. So once they've all been cleaned and the float heights have been set up, the crucial thing is they all do the same thing at the same time. So as we've established, we're just showing on this one, that when you, when you put your foot on the throttle, the butterfly's open. So you need all four of these to be opening at the same time. It's no good having one closed and one early, one late. Things are going to be all over the place. So there's quite an elaborate linkage system in the middle of all this that you've got to adjust. Obviously with V8, you've got four, four cylinders here, four cylinders there, so you've got to balance that bank to this bank, so they're doing the same. You've got to have that carb doing the same as that carb. You've got to have that carb doing the same as that one, and that one, and that bank doing the same as this bank. So that's the where people talk about tuning and balancing carbs. That's basically what you're doing, setting them all up so they're all doing the same thing at the same time. And there's a, an array of linkages, and there's lots of various little screws that you can adjust that balance all the different bits. Um, it does take a while, sometimes it goes to plan and sometimes it doesn't, but it's a bit of a sort of dark art. There's no real science to it. You just sort of do it on, you know, some of it you can do practically with vacuum gauges and what have you. Some of it, you know, one carb might run better with a little bit more air or a little bit less air. It's just the way they are, especially with old carbs with you no know, slightly warm bits. But when we eventually get this running, we'll show you how we do all that.